Hey guys, welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. Patera here with you today. We've got a fun video, a whole experiment we've got lining up. We've been meaning to do this, but with broody hens and all the things going into winter, other projects always kind of push that aside. We're going to have a challenge. In fact, it was so funny because we've talked about doing this before on our Facebook page, and uh, Mother Earth News, Tennessee Community, sort of set a challenge to us, sent us some information about an article um, that was posted by Mother Earth News in 1974, and it's about how to basically guarantee if you're incubating eggs if you're going to get roosters versus pullets. A lot of folks believe in this, a lot of folks say it's a myth. I have my opinion on it, so uh, which is basically I think a lot of different types of breeds give you certain shapes, but there is this indeterminate range in terms of what exactly is a bullet versus what is oval enough to give you a pullet. So the, the theory is if you have an egg that is more shaped like a bullet, a, a very distinct point at the end. But that's gonna give you a rooster, okay? So that's the theory. If you have an egg that is clearly, and we've been going through these, there's a couple in here that is really round, that's more round shaped, okay? Much more rounded, the more oval, the better um, in, in determining would that give you a pullet or a hen. So. We're going to do this. We're going to go through our eggs. We've already been, we've kind of let them gather up for a day or two to guarantee more different shapes and sizes and whatnot. So we're, we've been pulling and I've been separating and I've already got one I know for a fact that's going to go in on the, uh, the girl side. So um, in fact, we're going to try to do all oval shaped eggs as much as possible to see what we get. But a Rhode Island uh, red like this one. I know that for a fact, so I marked it. So she's going in there. But so we're going to set the incubator. Now I have a small incubator, so I really think a lot of testing grounds for this you want to have a large base. But so we're going to do this for fun and see how it works out and report back to them because they asked and we're going to let them know. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Also, this is a great time to show you how we set our eggs and set our incubator. Now, if you've never done this, let me explain to you right now. You have to have a rooster in the barn or in the coop to, to give you the possibility of having fertilized eggs. You have to have fertilized eggs. That's a no-brainer, whether it's putting it in the incubator or setting it with a broody hen, okay? Um, but even with that, there is no guarantee. I have set my incubator many times, and even with that, I'll find out later on in the game, I didn't have a fertilized egg. There's just really, you know, it's a kind of a guessing game. So you, what you want to do is you, if you have a certain type of breed that you are definitely trying to incubate, you're going to know that by what you have and by the color of the egg or witnessing who laid what like I did yesterday, okay? Or you're going to go with a chance of mixes or just whatever you've got. I am going with a total mix here. I'm going to pick different colors. I'm really going for shape and cleanliness first. You want to make sure that regardless of what egg you set, that it's very, very clean, okay? You want it to be a clean egg. Do not wash the egg, okay? Don't do anything to it. We're going to mark it, but that's just so that we know how to turn it and which egg that it is or whatnot. Um, so that's what we will be doing. Now, you're going to set the eggs. Chicken eggs, it takes approximately 21 days for them to incubate, give or take, okay? We've learned that lesson too. So, but pretty much right on the money, you're gonna start seeing some pipping around day 20. That's, the, you know, the incubator does that for you. Uh, it's very more consistent than I've seen with a broody hen, although they're, you know, they're the best moms. Um, but so also, now some folks ask me, well, how do you know if you've got a fertilized egg? Well, I don't. Uh, I will not know until I candle them. That's why candling is so important. So for those of you that are new to this and you've seen candling videos and you're asking, why do you candle the eggs? You do it for multiple reasons. First reason that you do it is in that 21 day period, you're gonna want to candle anywhere from set day seven to day 10. That's gonna be your first candling. Some folks just do it on day seven. Some folks like to you know, see more a little bit later in the game, so they wait till about day 10. But that's when you're going to get your first vision in terms of what is in that egg. So we'll be going over that with you. I also like to candle on around day 14 and then day 17, right before the lockdown period. So we're going to have several videos lining this up, part one, two, three, and whatever. And we're going to see what we get. I hope I get all girls. But uh, uh, that would be good. Um, so we're going to get this set up for you. And we'll see how it turns out. Who will be the lucky eggs?
All right, guys, we've gone through our eggs and we have selected what we feel is most likely the most rounded shapes. We're trying to get a variety of colors. And if you look over here with all the eggs we've been going through, you're gonna notice a trend. A lot of the green eggs are more bullet shaped. Uh, there just tends to be that shape going also all with the Ancona eggs, uh, which are you know our great little uh, white egg layers. So long story short, we tried to get a mix of colors. Most of them are your average uh, large brown, extra large brown eggs. Um, and that's okay because we have mixes of different roosters. So we have a different variety of things going on here. Now my egg number one is definitely a Rhode Island red mix. I know that for a fact because um, I pulled that from the box after she laid it. And I actually marked it and it happens to be quite oval. So we're going to put that in as egg number one. Obviously this is going to be a Moran mix. You're going to have an Easter egg or mix. Uh, you're going to have an Ancona, which while it's still possibly what I would consider in the um, indeterminate, uh, maybe, you know, it just depends. It may be, uh, that's quite oval for my Ancona eggs, so it may not be. So you may be looking at a situation where, you know, some, you have to look at the breed and what they lay uh, and then compare the shapes. We will find out. And obviously this right here is most likely going to be a Golden Comet. They tend to have more oval, large ovalish, you know, almost like orange or lemon style eggs. So, and I definitely have a rooster from that. So, uh, we will find out. We're going to put them in the incubator. I have let it sit. We've got it up to the proper um, degrees. Now, mine is in Celsius, okay? So, 38 degrees Celsius. So, what you're going to do is this is going to be uh, going into day one. Now, this is the late evening. Um, so what I've done is I've come over to the calendar. You can barely see with right there. So we're here. This is where we're putting our eggs in on the 9th, okay? December the 9th. This is going to be day one, the next day, okay? So you've got to go 24. So tomorrow is day one. And I've gotten the, you know, I've written down the days. I always do that. So I know when day seven is and all of that. And I keep up with it. So we will know when to candle them so that we will know whether or not we have uh, definitely have you know fertilized eggs, maybe one that's possibly had an early death. There's things that happen that candling definitely shows you. So what I'm going to do is we're going to put them in the incubator. Now let me go over this real quick. I have marked my eggs. I've numbered them for this experiment just to kind of keep up with what does what. Normally I just do an X and an O design, uh, but because we're doing something specific here, I marked one side with a number. There's only 10. And the other side I have done with an X. I turn my eggs. My little incubator here does not have an egg turner. I'm getting a new incubator, so it'll have that. But um, three times a day, and I always put a reminder on the refrigerator, morning, sometime in the afternoon, and then late evening, right before bed, I just turn the eggs. Okay, you want to just keep them turned. So you always know whether you've turned them or not. You want to always make sure you're keeping your temperature where you need to keep it, depending on your incubator. You want to keep water, obviously, in there to keep the humidity up. So we're going to go ahead and put this in here. With this little incubator, it comes with a foam. Okay. You see I've hatched eggs out there before, and we've cleaned it out. Um, so you're going to let the eggs rest on the foam. Okay. Um, and so I'm just going to start putting them in there. And we'll start turning them in the morning. So I'm just going to line them up. So tomorrow morning when I get up, come in here, check everything, make coffee, whatever, before I go out, I'm literally going to turn them. That's how we roll. Okay? And again, you want to make sure that you've got um, clean eggs. You don't want to wash them. You want to keep that um, the, the seal on them. I mean, I'm making my numbers go the opposite way. It doesn't really matter. As long as you know, you know, which side is which is what really matters. So that will go in there. So we're putting all of these sweethearts in here. And hopefully we've got some babies. And hopefully we, uh, the goal here is to get hens. Let me switch camera hens here. The goal here is to get girls, right? We want a lot more egg layers. We've got enough boys out there. But if we get a boy, that's okay. We love them too. All right, so we've got them in there. We're going to let them rest. And again, we've set the calendar for tomorrow actually being day one, and we'll just keep up with it. And we're going to put the top back on. I actually let the incubator sit 
for a while um, before we did this so that I know that it's working properly, that it's getting its temperature and holding its temperature. Um, you know, I just started using this, um, or I, I actually I stopped using this just last week, so it's been working very well. So, But you always want to make sure you don't want to put them in there in the next day or two and find out something's wrong. So you want to try to make sure that it's working out real well for you. So we're set, ready to go. Now this is going to be a progression of time, so we'll have several videos following this. So you know, if you want to tag along with us, uh, we'll continue to update and post videos about it. So this is going to be video one. So we'll have videos about the candling and about the hatching, and then of course, hopefully, we'll be able to sex the chicks early so we can find out what we're looking at in terms of this project. We appreciate you watching. We'll keep you posted. If you like what you see here at Appalachia's Homestead, be sure to like and subscribe and check us out on Facebook and Instagram and Pinterest and our blog. We love hearing from you guys. This is going to be a cool little project and uh, we look forward to the results. We appreciate you watching and we'll talk to you soon.